I want to give all praises to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, double honor to the elders of Great Millstone, to the elder apostles of Great Millstone, who are our teachers, salutations to the elect, the true laborers, you know, enduring the Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. I uh, basically want to touch on the topic uh, about, you know, thinking too much, you know, and uh, basically that leading up to not having faith, you know, wavering in the spirit, all right? I'm going to start off with the scripture to see what the Lord said. Our King, Yahweh Shai, it says, <clears throat> Matthew 10, 18, And ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against against them and the Gentiles. Right now, Yahweh Shai is pretty much talking to the disciples that he sent forth, that he was going to send forth, you know, amongst the people to go and teach in the hill and to, uh, you know, to do miracles. And basically, basically, Yahweh Shai told him, said, look, you're going to be brought before governors and kings for my name, for my sake. You know, and, and when you get around people like that or whatever the case is, typically people, they, they uh, get nervous or they tense up. And that's what he told them. He says, but when they deliver you up, take no thought <clears throat> how or what ye shall speak, for it shall be given you in the same hour what ye shall speak. And this is something that needs to be applied to everyday life, dealing with men in the faith. You know, the men in the faith, you know, that's how we got to carry ourselves, especially dealing with spiritual situations. All right. We're dealing with a spiritual situation, which pretty much everything is spiritual. We can't we can't have thought. You know, we have the examples in the scriptures on who to follow on what kind of manner uh men, what kind of manner of uh characteristics they had, what kind of characteristics they had, you know, in their life and what made them men of the Lord. All right. Um and let me say this real quick as I was dwelling on this. Uh, a man of the Lord <clears throat> is not going a man of the Lord is gonna have attributes already that he has. And uh you can't have, you can't put on attributes and become a man of the Lord. A man of the Lord is a man of the Lord. And he's going to do what a man of the Lord does. A man can't, uh, uh, a man can't make himself a man of the Lord. All right. I just want to say that real quick. And then uh, I'm going to continue in Matthew 10 and 19. It says, but when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what ye shall speak. For it shall be given, given you in that same hour. What shall ye speak? And it continues, says, For it is not ye that speak, but the Spirit of your Father which speaketh in you. All right? And that's pretty much what it is. When you understand that you're just a vessel, it makes the job a lot easier. All right? When you're going out there in the street or whatever the case is, you, we, uh, when I say in the street, talking about street speaking, you know, teaching, you know, when, you, when we out there, we're not really supposed to put much effort or what thought that we're going to say yeah you have some scriptures you have in mind or whatever the case is you know but ultimately we're supposed to be prepared for any situation and then when you in doing that you're allowing the heavenly father to fight the battle for you you know um i want to get an example right quick and this is uh hebrews so like this is hebrews chapter Hebrews chapter Salaki, chapter 11, you know, I'm going to start at verse 1, of course, just to uh, give you the background. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And that word substance, when you go into it, sub meaning under, and stance meaning stand or stance. So it means to understand. Now, faith is pretty much the understanding of things hoped for, for the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtained a good report. And, then, and this is, you know, going out in the streets and having the faith, doing, doing, and, and it's an action. Now, one action that is used as an example on the topic at hand is uh, verse 8, dealing with Abraham. It says, by faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place, which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed and went out not knowing whether he went. Right. Now, uh, basically, the Heavenly Father told Abraham to go into the land of Canaan, you know, and he so joined from his, uh, from his household, from his parents' household. 
and the scriptures say he didn't know where he was going, but he just basically followed the voice of the voice of voice of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh It says by faith he saw John in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles, with Isaac and Jacob. The heirs with him of the same promise and the thing about it was he was going to a land where he never knew nothing about pretty much it was a land that it was already inhabited by another people he didn't have no family he didn't have nobody with him but he still had the faith he just went and he walked and you imagine back in the ancient world you know really no landmarks and uh or nothing like that nothing to navigate he didn't have gps you know it's like uh nowadays you have a job and say, for instance, you do a delivery delivery job, you know, you have a, a delivery based job, and your job and your and your manager or your boss says, "Look, I need you to go to 583, you know, Twenty uh, Second Street." And you're like, "Okay," and you have some sort of idea, you know. Ab in Abraham's case, it wasn't like that, all right. It says, uh, "But yeah, that was pretty much the point." Oh no, Salakia verse 10. For he looked for a city which had which had foundations, whose builder and maker is the most high. You know, and basically, yeah, Abraham journeyed to the land of promise through faith. You know, not because <clears throat> it's not about what we know. That's what brothers have to understand. When you understand this, you're putting off your renew your renew when you're renewing your mind, you're putting off everything that you think that you know. That's why we fill our mind with the scriptures all right uh, <clears throat> it's when you go to war you go to a battle you know you load the gun with bullets you know and then and then from when you go to war or whatever the case is you know you shoot those bullets you know it, it's not a you you just you're just someone just holding the gun or you know holding a sword in this in this manner you're just swinging the sword all right with through the spirit Symbolically, where the where the uh, Yahweh Shai is the sword ultimately, you know, and it's doing all the work. We're just, you know, the Most High puts it in our mind what to say and what to do, right? But um, another example, you know, another scripture I want to get into, which pretty much touches on the topic, is James, uh, the first chapter, right? And it says, um, verse five, it says, any if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of the Most High. That giveth to you all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, not wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven when the driven with the wind and tossed. Meaning you're unsustainable, man. You don't have that substance. You don't have that understanding, because the understanding is understanding that the heavenly Father is the one you know, doing all the talking. It's the Heavenly Father's words that we're using. And with that, just knowing you're a vessel, you can do a lot, you know. That's why we do things, we, we try in the Spirit to do things unwavering. You know, we move with confidence in what we do as long as it's in Yahweh B'Hashim Yahweh Shai. That's why the Scriptures say, um, through Yahweh B'Hashim Yahweh Shai, we, we boast all the day long because it's not of us. Continuing, it says, for let not, Salakia, verse 6, for let him ask in faith, not wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. Verse 7, for let not the man, let not the man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. That There, there you go, that un instability. You know, if you're not stable in this time, when are you going to be stable? Like the scriptures say in Isaiah 33 and 6, wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability, meaning the stableness of thy times. What time? The time starting with now. All right. That's why we're gearing our minds, preparing our minds with the scriptures for the ultimate test. All right. Which is that hour of temptation, which is when we're going to be brought in front of the governors, in front of kings, you know, these top uh, rabbis and top priests, you know, in these synagogues and these dungeons. You know, and they're gonna try us, you know. But this is pretty much the practice. This is exhibition. Real game time is coming up soon, you know. You know, the regular season, so to speak, you know, was coming up soon, man. All right, and then you got playoffs and then you got a championship, and that's ultimately the kingdom. 
right? Continuing on, it says, uh, well, that was it on that, so lock I'm going to jump to verse, chapter 4, all right? Chapter 4, I'm going to go to uh, James chapter 4. Um, I'm going to start at verse 5. Do you think that the scripture saith in vain? The spirit dwelleth in us, lust to envy, but he giveth more grace. Wherefore, he saith, the most high resisteth the proud, but giveth grace to the humble. All right. And the part of that, that's that's that, you know, knowing that I'm just a vessel because the scriptures say the sacrifices of, to the Lord is a contrite and broken spirit. All right. That's humility. That's knowing you're just a vessel. All right. Submit yourselves, therefore, to the Most High. Resist the devil, and he will flee from 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 you. Right, and you know the uh, there's a saying in the world: uh, the mind is a devil, the devil's playground. You know, uh, what's the scripture? How does the scripture go in Proverbs? It says, uh, uh, uh damn. I, I'll put it up in post production, but you know, meaning that the oh, the heart is deceitful above all things, you know, because that's Satan. Satan's fucking with you because he knows that you're in the flesh, you know, just like when you read uh, uh, Romans, yeah, Romans the seventh chapter, when, when Paul talks about his battle, his war between the uh, the flesh and the spirit, meaning the mind, meaning your spirit versus your yeah versus your flesh, because your mind. Uh, 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 your flesh wants to do certain things. Your flesh wants to uh, go left, but the spirit is saying go right. And then you get a a, 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 a a fork in the road, so to speak. And then you have to make a decision. You know what I'm saying? But when you just understand that, you know, you're flowing with the Lord, you just it's just naturally going to happen. You know. And uh, matter of fact, I want to get that scripture real quick. It's uh, Sirach, chapter four. Sirach chapter 4 verse 26 and it reads be not ashamed to confess thy sins and force not the course of the river right because the uh, the spirit of the Lord is likened unto uh, uh, water and is likened unto fire all right and it said force not the course of the river meaning let the thing let it happen let things happen man you know and because uh, uh, the Most High is something with you if you got faith, that's why the scriptures say that He uh, but give grace unto the humble, you know. Um, I'm gonna go back to James chapter 4, verse 7. It says, Submit yourselves to the Most High, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to the Most High, and he will draw nigh, nigh to you, right? And you know, because the ultimate goal for Satan is for you to, you know pretty much go based off your thoughts because that's satan's job man you know the scriptures say i'm gonna read it again draw nigh to the most high and he will draw nigh to you meaning get into the scriptures man go with the flow man you know especially when we out in the uh, streets teaching you know we're making these videos you know you're dealing with dealing with brethren you know when you're amongst brethren go with the flow man especially you know you're dealing with some some diligent brothers man you know, you know who the diligent brothers are in your camp. You know who the, the faithful warriors are in your camp. You know, I say this too real quick because basically these the scriptures is uh, going into is uh, not being indecisive because typically what, who's that for? When you think of indecisive, that's women, man. You know, when you, when we men, man, we're supposed to be decisive. We're supposed to know how to make decisions, man. You know, and because we have the instruction manual, the, the, the instructions are the scriptures, so we know what we should know already, what path we need to take. You know, and we just go with it, All right? And it says, resist it. Yeah, yeah. Draw nigh unto the Most High. Draw nigh to the Most High. He will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts or your mind, ye double-minded. Right, you're supposed to purify your mind. How you purify your mind? First and foremost, starting off with these scriptures, the volume of the book, man. You know, and and it says, and it says, purify your hearts, purifying your mind, ye double-minded. 
men that are, oh man, I don't know what to do. Should I do this? Should I do that? You know what I'm saying? And I'm not talking about, you know, uh, uh, every, uh, uh, your, 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 your uh, everyday work. You know, when you, some brothers do construction, you know, some brothers do plumbing, some brothers do uh, mechanics or whatever. You, of course, you're going to make those decisions. You know, that's, those, that's common things. I'm talking spiritual, man. Spiritual and, and spiritual and spiritual decisions, you know, sometimes, and, and the scriptures say what? Uh, not Let not the sun go down in your wrath, you know, so we ain't supposed to be really sleeping on certain things, you know, although there is a scripture in the pocket that tells you that some, some matters you do need to take time for it, but for the most part, we in the spirit, and you know when you're in the spirit, you're just supposed to go with it, man, you know, purify your mind, meaning empty out your thoughts, all right? It says, uh, be afflicted and mourn and weep. Or let your laughter turn to mourning and your joy to heaviness. And that's that contrite spirit, that contrite, uh, that broken, that broken spirit, that broken heart. All right. Uh, I'm going to go to a scripture. This is First Thessalonians chapter 5. You know, you know, chapter 5, verse 19. Uh, simple scripture. It says, uh, quench not the spirit. That's plain right there. Quench not the spirit. You know, go with the flow, man. You know when the, the spirit is working, you know. You, kn you know you know when the the, uh, the the spirit of the Lord is, is on you. Just keep going, man. You know. Let the, let leave the indecisive shit for the woman and the faint-hearted, you know. Because, you know, that, that really ain't for, that's not for man of the Lord. That's not, you know. And with that, you know, I'm going to say all praise to Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh Shai. Double honor to the elders of Great Millstone, uh, who rule well. A salutation to the Akim out there that's teaching the word, you know, the, the faithful laborers. All right? Shalom.